and they're now affiliated with Einstein. It's called Einstein Washington. Right. Oh. Yeah. Right. See, it says the university it says the University Hospital for the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Yeah. Okay. Boy, after this, you're going to run. <laughs> okay, sure. Thank you so much. Okay, you're so welcome. Enjoyable. You're welcome. Well, this, we're almost to the end. But, I know uh, you're going to do the, uh, yeah, the yeah, right. house. Okay. I remember when I was still at the uh, At that end, yeah, yeah, right. And it's because we used to crawl through it. There was no yeah, I know. Security. We used to run through the, I know, the, the room. You were the bane of the historical society. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, you're thank welcome. You you're welcome. Thank you. That guy wasn't torched. <laughs> yeah, well, we made sure. Well, Kazimirov was the guy who really made sure of that. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, this uh, small building over here originally started out as a residence, as most of the buildings in this nice, uh, pleasant block started out. They all have been converted in one way or another. Most of them have been converted into offices, uh, mostly for medical purposes of people connected with uh, Montevideo Hospital. Some of them have not. This is one that has not. Uh, this has been converted into the Bronx County Archives Building. Uh, this is uh, where you find uh, the papers of some uh, very important people, some of the bar presidents, um, some, of the, uh, some of the congressmen and city councilmen, uh, assemblymen and senators, but also some of the major uh, institutions in the Bronx, such as the Bronx Board of Trade and uh, several others. Uh, some uh, civic uh, uh, leaders in the Bronx have their papers here as well. So this is be uh, and it's uh, you know it's constantly being updated and uh, and redone, but it is a major and major resource and will become a, continue to become a major resource to, for the history of the Bronx as time goes on. Now, two uh, doors down, there's something else. <clears throat> Why, which building do you spend most of your time on? None of them. <laughs> okay. All right, over here. I've never been here before. What's no, this I have no idea. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> yeah. Now, this building is the, um, uh, the research library and the administrative offices of the Bronx County Historical Society. This is the largest library devoted to the history of the Bronx. Uh, you have a, uh, uh, a lot of books that you would never even expect to be here. Uh, some of them are rare books, although I prefer mine well done. Uh, <laughs> the, um, uh, there are uh, periodicals, newspapers, uh, over 50,000 photographs of the Bronx, including the oldest known photograph of the Bronx uh, that was taken in 1857 showing the village of Tremont as seen from Mount Hope. And if you see the photograph, all you see are barns and, and, and farms and uh, things like that in the area. Uh, Mount Hope is uh, just to the west of, uh, of uh, uh, Webster Avenue, south of Tremont. That was Mount Hope. If you stand on the site where the photograph was taken, you'd be in the middle of an apartment house. <laughs> Before it was graded. Right? Yeah, right. Well, no, it wasn't graded. It's still there. Um, so, uh, and of course, this is where the offices are as well. So, uh, you know, this is a major resource. If anybody wants to use the library, just call up the Historical Society, uh, ask for the librarian, and say uh, what you want to, uh, to do research on. Uh, you make an appointment, you come right in, and all the material is right there waiting for you. What if you just want to rummage around in there? Can't do, can't rummage. <laughs> there's no, there's no rummage sales around browse. here. <laughs> no, you can't browse. Can't browse. <laughs> well, yeah. No, the, well, they, that's the whole idea. The idea is that you want to make sure that the stuff is there. <laughs> okay? Uh, uh, the earthen hill in the back. Uh, that is the remnants of the Williams Bridge Reservoir. You notice the street over here is called Reservoir Oval. In this case, Reservoir Oval West. There's a Reservoir Oval East, but it's an oval. It goes all the way around. Um, this was a, uh, um, the Williams Bridge Reservoir uh, that was built um, to, uh, to contain uh, the waters from the Kensico Dam. Uh, and it was a, built in, uh, uh, in 1883, and it ceased to uh, work in 1923. Uh, it was just too small by that time. 
It was one of the principal reasons why this neighborhood was first developed, because they figured, the developers figured they would have a steady water supply so they could build houses over here, and that was the beginning of the suburbanization of this area. Um, in, uh, in the 1930s, Robert Moses, who was the uh, uh, Parks Commissioner, uh, just took this over and made it into a public park, and it is now Williamsbridge Oval Park, uh, with a lot of athletic facilities inside it. Okay? Uh, well, there's actually, uh, over here, the way to get in there is underneath the wall, underneath the wall, on uh, the south side of the building, and on the other side, you have to, like, climb a couple of steps to get on. But it's a sort of limited access because of the wall that's around it. Uh, but you have all sorts of athletic facilities inside. Now, you notice the, uh, this statue of the Civil War soldier that's over here. Uh, that is called the Bronx River Soldier for a particular reason. Uh, it was first commissioned by uh, a group of uh, Union veterans of the Civil War uh, from Morrisania. Uh, they called themselves the Oliver Tilden Post of the Grand Army of the Republic. Oliver Tilden was the first man from Morrisania to be killed in the war in the Battle of Chantilly. Uh, when Woodlawn Cemetery opened up, the Oliver Tilden Post uh, purchased a plot of land for their members, and they decided they have a statue of the Civil War soldier that would overlook their grounds. Uh, and so they went to a sculptor in New York by the name of John Grignola, who sculpted this statue for them. And when they took a look at the statue, they said, no, we don't like it because it's, you, you chipped the cap and you chipped something else, and we're not going to take damaged goods. Yeah, I know. Uh, they, uh, they decided not to take the, uh, the statue because it had been chipped. Uh, if you come a little closer, uh, that's very rude. The, uh, that doesn't work. Good. Yeah. Well, this is not a, you know, not, not a, uh, it's for recording, it's not for amplification. Uh, in any event, uh, what, um, uh, what Grignola did was to leave it in his studio as a sample of the kind of work that he can do. In comes a fellow by the name of John B. Lazari, who worked for Woodlawn Cemetery, and who had a, uh, some property on the west bank of the Bronx River, just south of Gun Hill Road. He took a liking to the statue, and Grignola said to him, listen, I can't get rid of this for love or money, take it, it's yours. So he takes the statue, puts it on his front lawn. Meanwhile, across on the east side of the Bronx River, uh, there were a group of Swiss immigrants who put up a tapestry factory, and most of the people who worked for the factory lived on this side of the river. Lazari had a wooden footbridge going over the river from one, to the, uh, one side to the other for his own private use. But if the guys were late for work, uh, they would go over his front lawn, go over his back lawn, go over his private wooden footbridge to get to the tapestry factory. He didn't like it. He destroyed the wooden footbridge, leaving the uh, center granite pier that held up the bridge in the middle of the river. In 1898, he had grown tired of the statue of, in the, on his front lawn. He had some friends from Woodlawn Cemetery over, and uh, one of them said, Listen, John, you got a great uh, pedestal for a statue out there in the middle of the river. Why don't you put it there? So they moved the statue. They got some guys from Woodlawn Cemetery, young guys, moved it out into the middle of the river, uh, put it in a place with metal L bolts, and carved the date 1898 on the granite pier. That granite pier is still there, by the way. Uh, However, uh, by the 1960s, that statue had been in the river from 1898. Uh, the L bolt started to get loose. It fell over face forward, uh, breaking uh, a number of parts. Uh, the Parks Department took it, put it in a, in, in a uh, warehouse on Amsterdam Avenue. Then people began to ask the Bronx County Historical Society, where's the Bronx River Soldier? The Historical Society instituted a search, found it over there, wanted it restored, and to make sure that nothing untoward would happen to it in the future, decided to put it over here. Uh, this, the Parks Department uh, was a little disturbed because they said with pollution in the air, uh, it's never going to work. Uh, however, one of the boys who helped put it in place in 1898 was still alive. Uh, he was the last member of the crew. Uh, and by that time, he was the head of the mausoleums at Woodlawn Cemetery. And these guys had, were old craftsmen. They knew what to do. He said, listen, I'll call in the formula to the Parks Department so that they can fix it and nothing will ever happen to it. So he did that. 
And in the last uh, week of August of 1970, it was put in place over here on a pedestal that says the Bronx River Soldier so everybody can identify it. So that is the story behind the Bronx River Soldier. Okay? Now, of course, we've got that house. Okay, let's go to the uh, to the front of the house. Yeah, boy, what is that stone over there? Yeah, that stone over there is from the. Uh, no, no, it's a it's a mileage marker, but it's for a railroad. It was for the it was for the New York and Hudson River Railroad, and it was at the old Fordham Station, and it marked the number of miles uh, from New York. How many? How many? Uh, let me see. What does it say below the NY? Say <coughs> Whatever. A line, nine miles. Yeah. Oh wow, that's interesting. How many park? I forget. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I haven't measured it yet. Are you still Okay. Nine miles from Grand Central. Lloyd. Yeah. Nine miles from Grand Central. Yeah. Oh, we'll be Grand Central. In the Bronx. And this oldest house in the area. This is now this is the Valentine hyphen Varian house. It was built in 1758. A little bit before my time. Uh the man who built it was a blacksmith by profession, Isaac Valentine, and that's the Valentine of Valentine Avenue. Uh, the family lived in the Bronx for many, many decades. Um, during the American Revolution, there were six battles that occurred in and around this house. And in 1781, this hill that we are on became a, uh, uh, an encampment for the French army, which was uh, our allies during the American Revolution. And the commander of the French army in America, the Comte de Rochambeau, slept in this house overnight. Uh, he had fricassee for dinner. I know that, for sure. Okay. Uh, one of his uh, officers referred to this as a wretched farmhouse. But after Versailles, you know. Uh, the, um, uh, after the war, uh, the, uh, uh, Isaac Valentine got, as many people in the area did, was in terrible financial trouble. Uh, the debts were up over his head and he couldn't pay them off. Eventually the house was sold to an Isaac Varian who was a butcher from New York. The Varians lived here for three generations and operated the farm until 1905 uh, when, it be when urbanization hit this area uh, and they had to sell it. The house was purchased by a man by the name of William Beller who worked for the Customs House uh, who knew the historic nature of the house and wanted to preserve it. He rented it out for little or no money to people just to make sure it was kept in good repair. His son eventually sold it, or actually donated it to the Bronx County Historical Society. Now the house was not originally on this site. The house was located direct, di directly across the street where the new house is, uh, where the uh, apartment house is with the bright colored brick and it faced uh, Van Cortlandt Avenue East, which was, of course, the original Boston Post Road. Uh, now, he sold the house, uh, he donated the house to the Historical Society, but the land was donated to the developers of that apartment house, so the house had to be moved. And so, the Historical Society imported 5,000 Egyptian slaves and had it dragged across. You go with experience. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, it took two days. Uh, first to cross the street and then it, it was parked overnight over there and then it came over here and then was put in place. And then it was opened up by the Historical Society as the Museum of Bronx History. And your, uh, your uh, admission to this tour is also an admission to the museum. So we're going to go inside and I'll point out to you some of the things inside, uh, how the building was built, and then you can also see the exhibit. Uh, the exhibit is uh, uh, about the history of African Americans in the Bronx and also uh, specifically as well a part about uh, memories of Morrisania because Morrisania became the most heavily uh, densely populated black neighborhood in the Bronx. Uh, but we're going to go inside, I'll point out some of the uh, features of this house and then you can go and see the exhibit. Okay, this has been Lloyd Altan, the Bronx Borough Historian for the Bronx County Historical Society. This tour of historic Marshall Parkway area took place on March 25th, 2006. Thank you.